Good morning. Welcome to another Monday Mindset. Excited to be here with you guys on another Monday today. Going to talk about marketing, right? So this is Monday Mindset, Marketing and Money. The whole concept of this show was want to help you get your mind right so you can get your marketing right because sales and marketing are really like this so you can get your money right uh, because you can be the best in the world at something. But if people don't know you exist, you'll never earn the business. So I want to talk today about email marketing. I want to give you some tips, not only on how to actually build your email list, but on subject lines. And what we have found, we send about 3 million emails a month for our own business. But on behalf of our clients, we're sending tens of millions of emails a month. So we've learned a thing or two about subject lines that work, about email copy that works. So we're going to talk about that today. But before we do that, I will see you on the other side of this intro. There are no bad businesses. There are just those people who don't know enough to see the opportunities in the work they're in. If there seems to be no future or opportunity in it, it isn't always because it's not there, but perhaps only because we can't see it. Good morning again. Excited for this Monday mindset here. We're going to talk about email marketing. Um, it was on my brain this morning because I was uh, thinking about just our marketing campaigns. And I've often shared to you, um, you know, obviously just want to teach you guys what is not only helping my clients. Uh, so we work with tens of thousands of small businesses in about 142 different industries, many in the insurance industry, but also my own business. Like I, I do my own marketing, right? Whether it's print marketing, email marketing, social marketing, and email is a heavy part of our marketing. We're doing about 3 million emails a month. Um, and you guys are probably on our email list. And email has about a 42 to 1 return on investments. If you Google kind of return on investment and look at kind of what the MailChimps and Constant Contacts, what their research studies have showed is that for every dollar you put in, on average, most businesses are seeing about a $42 in return. So that is an amazing ROI. The only issue with email today is that everybody's doing it, right? So marketers or businesses, when they find something that works, what do they do? They all run to it. And naturally, what that what happens there is it creates a bunch of noise. And so it makes it harder and harder to cut through that noise. That's why it's so critical to always be on the leading edge. So you don't want to be on the bleeding edge where you're trying stuff that nobody's doing and it's not really working. But right as traction starts getting going, if you can be on the leading edge of something, man, those are the golden errors of those uh, platforms, whether it's Facebook, TikTok, email marketing. So right now, email is still incredible. I would encourage you, you all need to focus on email and your marketing strategy. Why? Why is email one of the most important things you should actually have in your marketing strategy is because you own the list. When you build the email list, you own that list and you are not beholden, whether you're advertising on social media or doing some marketing campaign through some platform, you're not beholden to that platform for your marketing because you have your own list. It takes time to build a great email list. Actually, my first real tip or point for all of you watching this is if you want to have really effective emails, it starts with a really effective list. Number one rule in email marketing, do not buy a list. If you're going to buy a list, know that you will get marked as spam. So these um, 
lists are very good at ISPs are very good at marking who's bought a list and they'll blacklist you. And that's why you'll end up in spam all the time. You'll end up in junk mail. So you don't want to buy a list if you can help it. If you're going to buy a list, you want to spin up an IP address, blast that list out through that IP address, and then probably close that down and, and spin up another uh, IP to actually send that or ISP to send that out. So that's something that we've done in the past that hasn't worked extremely well. You don't want to buy a list. You want to build the list. You want to get opted in emails. So one way you can get opted emails that are really effective is through Facebook advertising. So one of the ways we build our list really effectively here at Reminder Media is we run ads on social media and not just ads for like our magazine, though this actually builds our email list because people put in their email to request a sample. Uh, so we send them a PDF sample, but we'll run what we call top of funnel ads. And these top of funnel ads, maybe you've seen some of them. They're like our printables. So one that we have going on right now that is insanely popular is our Halloween printable. And it's like this little printable you can print out that you can attach like a Reese's peanut butter cup to. So when you're going doing your Halloween stuff, it basically says, have I um, you know, recently told you that I love referrals, that type of idea. And people just go nuts over these principles. We get thousands and thousands of people downloading these principles. Well, in order to get this item of value, they have to enter in their email address. Why is that super valuable? Well, they're opting in to receive emails from my company. Not only that, if you run a good ad, I now know that this person is what? Interested in printed things. My magazine's a printed thing because they're downloading a printable that they can print out on their home computer and, and attach a piece of candy to that they can give out in their neighborhood, right? So I know they're interested in printed things. And I also know they're interested in giving items of value to their prospects and to their client base. So if you think kind of in advance of like, hey, the ad that I want, want to run on Facebook to get people to opt in on, I want to add, run an ad that's kind of a top of funnel that will also align with putting people into my nurture system of knowing they're interested in the things that I offer. So that's one way to build your email list. You do not want to purchase an email list. The way these ISPs and the way these servers work in the background, I'll just share even for Reminder Media, all of our clients come in, right? And they're all sending out emails to us. Everybody is put together. And so if one of you buys an email list and it's terrible, gets terrible open rates, gets a bunch of hard bounces, gets marked as spam, people are marking it as spam because you weren't, they weren't opted in, that actually hurts the whole ecosystem. So we actually had to create multiple servers on our side for people where we test you through one server just to see if you have a good list. And if you have a good list, we upgrade you to like our A plus servers because we know, okay, this person has a quality list. If you don't have a good list where you've bought the list, it, a lot of people on there didn't want to receive emails from you, you actually stay on like our C list or our C server because we don't want you to affect the whole ecosystem. We're not the only ones doing this. Pretty much every marketing company is doing this because email is something where the ecosystem affects each other. So everybody together is being sent out to this ISB and it's affecting everybody else. And so we have to be very cautious of the people who buy lists. So I have to tell you, don't buy a list. Want to harp on that. Build your list. It takes time, but get opted in emails. But here's what I really want to talk to you about today. I wrote down a bunch of tips for you on subject lines for your email, right? So I could give you some basic tips from an email perspective of, hey, we have found that if you're doing sales emails, you don't wanna have actually imagery and creative in your sales email. So when you're following up to your prospect, you actually wanna keep it plain text. You wanna keep it really short in your email. That's a basic tip for you. We've also found that, hey, you don't wanna be over promoting in your email, the same principle that applies for your drip touch points, right? The reason why this magazine works so well is because it's not just about insurance. Well, you, the same applies to your email. When you're email marketing people and you're dripping on them once a month, you wanna lead with value. It's Gary V's jab, 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 right hook. The whole concept is you give three times before you actually try to ask or try to promote. So those are some basic, just high level tips for you. But I wanna talk about subject lines because I mentioned the problem with email today is how many emails are you getting? I mean, I at least get 40 emails a day. And so your chance to cut through the noise is very low. And if you're anything like me, if you look at kind of how these email applications are programmed and how they're designed, you are able to read the subject line in about the first sentence or so. And so that is how most people 
actually comb through their email and decide whether they're going to open or not. So you want every bit of advantage you can on getting higher open rates. So my first tip for you is include the person's name in your email subject line. So MailChimp did an extensive study on this. I think they did it over, I want to say it was like 24 billion emails, right? So it was crazy. And they found, I wrote down the stat, they found that it was a 33% higher open rate when the subject line included the person's name, specifically the first and last name of in the email subject line. So that is a tip for you today. If you're trying to reach your prospects, if you're trying to drip on people, include their name in the subject line because it increases the open rate. And I think people like it's how to win friends and influence people. If you've ever read that book, the sweetest sound to anybody is their own name. And probably the same when it comes to looking in print, when you see your name, you're naturally drawn to it. And you actually read that subject line versus uh, combing it over. Second tip that I'll give you is use first person versus second or third person. So what do I mean by first person? So first person would be I, we, us, my, or me. There's been a lot of research done that if you use like my in the subject line or I in the subject line, it actually increases your open rates. So I think it's more speaking to that person. The only exception is in the second person you could use you um, those that actually you could use is you, but they find that I, we, us, my, our, or me putting that in your subject line actually will increase open rates. Now, here's this one for you. Urgency versus no urgency in your subject line. Should you use urgency? Should you not use urgency? Well, we have tested this a ton because we're obviously always trying to create urgency around buying our products, right? We're trying to create urgency around whether it's a promotion we're doing or something that's going on in the market. So they did this study and they used the word urgent in an email, breaking in an email subject line, important and alert. And look at this, right? So when using the word urgent, it increased the open rate 79%. 79% using the word urgent in your subject line. Using the word breaking increased it 8%, probably because that has to do more with news, you know, breaking news. And that's probably why it was a lot lower, but important. So if you put important in your subject line versus emails that don't have that in the subject line, it increased the open rate by 55%. And then alert increased it by 31%. So when you're thinking about, hey, I want to catch people's attention. Now, like anything in marketing, if you overplay it, then people will tune you out. So you don't want to always write urgent in your subject lines, right? But if you're trying to do something to catch people's attention, keep that in your mind. Write that down in your notes that, hey, I want to do some type of promotion where I'm actually reaching people. So maybe I use important in my subject line because I know that's going to increase my open rate by 55%. Uh, versus emails that don't have that. Here's another tip for you. Should you do long subject lines or short subject lines? So chat in if you think you should do long subject lines or short subject lines. I'm, I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts. So, Lily, good morning. Josh, good morning. Brian, I see you there, br brother. Good morning. Hope you're doing well. And then Alexis, good morning. So Brian is chatting in short. Any other guesses? Should you do short subject lines or long subject lines? I should have probably challenged you guys even more with this question and said, how short or how long, meaning how many words? Well, there's been some interesting research on this. The answer is, Brian, you get a gold star. The answer is short. Josh, sorry, brother. It's not long. It's, it's short. But here specifically, subject lines that have six to 10 words have a 21% open rate on average. Six to 10 words have a 21% open rate. If you have 21 to 25 words on average, you're getting a 9% open rate when they've done this, these case studies and this research. Zero to five words had 16% open rate. So zero to five words had the second highest open rate on average, but the sweet spot was six to 10 words had a 21% open rate. So my takeaway from that is short subject line. So if you think about it, the tips that I've given you, you go, okay, put their name in the subject line. You could create urgency by using, you know, important alert, urgent, breaking, right? 
and then you only have six to 10 words. So you only have a couple words left to get your point in. Here's another tip for you. Should you use emojis or not? Now, this is one we tested here at Reminder Media extensively. Should you use emojis in your subject line? I'm, I'm curious. Chat in if you think you should use emojis in your subject line. Now, we did this. We started using our emojis in subject lines uh, because Experian did this whole study and they found that emojis increased their emails by like 25%. And this is a great uh, case study for knowing how marketers ruin everything. So Experian did this thing where they uh, put emojis in their subject lines and their emails went up by like 25% in open rate. But you know what happened? All the marketers like Reminder Media and everybody else got on board and started doing uh, emojis in their subject lines. And then what happened? What happened was I, consumers started to see emojis as, oh, this is a business trying to reach me because my friend doesn't use emojis in the subject line. That's not something they do. They might use emojis in a text, but they don't use it in a subject line. It actually now is showing that it decreases open rates very minimally. It decreases by about 2% on average is what they're finding. But that is a case of marketers got a hold of something because they saw the traction. It was new. It caught people's eyes. It's called a pattern interrupt. So you're in your email, right? And you see all the same text and all of a sudden an emoji stands out and it's a pattern interrupt to get you to pay attention. But because it's been overused, I think now by businesses, it's actually not helping anymore. It's actually hurting a little bit using emojis in subject lines. So I thought that was super interesting. This is why marketing is a lot like technology. Something that works today might not work next year because marketing, right, is about cutting through the noise. And everybody tries to find unique things to have a pattern interrupt, to stand out, to, to pull people in. And once that is known, everybody else uses it. So now it becomes actually not unique anymore because everybody's doing it. And that's why you constantly have to be changing. In fact, it's so funny. You know, the, the average person is receiving like, I think it's 40 plus emails a day. The average person is receiving about seven pieces of direct mail. And so what used to be where direct mail actually was you were inundated with direct mail. You didn't pay attention. Now direct mail is so much less. You actually pay attention to what's coming through your mailbox. So like direct mail is like a hidden gem there. And this is coming from someone. I do millions of direct mail, but I do millions in email marketing and social media marketing. But we're seeing that, wow, it's interesting how things come full circle that you know, direct mail used to be not unique. Now it's unique because less and less people are doing it. All right, here's another one for you guys tip to get your subject lines increased. Should you use capitalization or no capitalization in your subject line? So when you write a subject line, should you do it in all caps? Uh, could you actually cut through the noise if you did it in all caps? And some of these I think are obvious. This one is yes. The studies have found that it, it's not a huge difference, but it has increased open rates by 7% if you use caps in your subject line. So you got to be careful again, because um, capitalization can make people think you're yelling at them. So you got to make sure that you're, it, it makes sense in what you're saying, because if you use their name in the subject line, which you should do because it increases open rates dramatically, I think 33%, then you also put it in all caps. It's going to stand out, but you need to make sure that what you're delivering actually or what you're saying in the subject line gets delivered in the email. That's one of the most important things. But capitalization is a way to increase your subject or in increase your open rate by 7%. This goes right along with that. Should you use an exclamation mark in your subject line? Informs looked at 5,000 subject lines that they sent out with punctu punctuation. So they were trying to test the uh, effectiveness of punctuation in a subject line. And they found that exclamation points actually increased the open rate, but question marks decreased it by 8%. And if you think about it, when you put a question mark in your subject line, the person is thinking they have to do what? They have to do work. And nobody wants to do work. Nobody wants to have stuff added to their plate. And in fact, when you're going through your email, you're just trying to clear it out real fast. So try not to put a question mark in your subject line. But exclamation points actually increased open rates. So that's a cool little thing to know when it comes to punctuation in your subject line. All right. Should you use ambiguous copy versus specific copy? So the saying is cute or should you be clear, clever or clear? So in marketing, the hard part about being a marketer is you tend to be creative. And so you like to be clever. 
in your subject line. You like to be cute in your subject line because you think it will hook people in. All of the stats show it's like a 541% increase. If you cut out all the clever, if you cut out all the cute and just be really clear, straight to the point. And here's why. Put yourself in the consumer's shoes. When you're looking at your email, are you actually task oriented in that moment? Are you trying to just get through to receive information? If you're anything like me, you are. You're not interested in being entertained when you're in your email inbox. You're not looking for the next best dad joke. Well, maybe you are, but most of us are not. Most of us are just looking task oriented. What is the information I need that's important to my day that I need to pay attention to that I need to follow up with? And this is why when you write your emails, cut out all the cuteness, cut out all the cleverness and just be very crystal clear so people don't have to think. You actually want to write your emails and write your email copy so that a fifth grader can understand what you're saying. A really cool hack here is take your email, go to ChatGPT or go to Bard, Google's version, right, of AI, and put your email into that and say, hey, rewrite this email to make it more clear and make it, write it in a way that a fifth grader could understand. And it will rewrite your email for you. And you can then look at it and go, yeah, this works or it doesn't work. And you can make tweaks. But that's a really simple hack that when you write a marketing email, take it over to ChatGPT, take it over to Bard, and have it actually critique your email and rewrite it to make it clear so that it, it comes across the right way. All right, here's the last one I'll give you for in, in increasing your email open rates and increasing your subject line. This was very interesting, but I think it makes sense. So they did a study on 5,000 emails and they noticed that one type of email had an incredible open rate. So this email stood out above the rest. In fact, it had a 65% greater open rate when you included these words in your subject line. And the words were, thank you. Thank you. That was the thing to include to increase your open rate by 65%. Now, not all your emails can be thank you, but think about this. Thank you for all you do. That actually had a 65% increase in open rates. And this was testing 5,000 different types of emails. A heartfelt thank you as your subject line, 63% open rate. Thank you for your outstanding support, 57% open rate or increase in open rate. And then thank you for making a difference, a 53% increase in open rate. So that is an action item for all of you today. Why not send a thank you email to your clients? You know, November's right around the corner, gratitude month. But why not send a thank you email to your clients? Because that will increase the open rate of your emails. And not only that, it's a great thing to do. So I hope these email subject line tips have helped you. Key, key points here is build your email list. Average return on investment right now is for every dollar spent. You should see about $42 in return from email marketing. Don't buy a list, build your list. It will take time, but it will be the thing that is the most valuable to you because algorithms can change, platforms can change. But when you own your email list, you have something to build upon and then try to increase your subject or try to improve your subject line to increase your open rates because you got to cut through the noise. I appreciate you guys so much. Get out there and win for you. Get out there and win for your clients, win for your family. Let's have an amazing week. Let's go crush it. Appreciate you guys.